similar in your textbook, Maps in Focus book, right? Uh, I guess the first thing we'd want to know is um, we've already done this and we should already know kind of like what the graph of this would look like. Um, because we'd have, to, but, but we'd have to split it up. This is in our extension course where we did the graphing functions um, where we've got like a quotient of two functions. Um, and what we would do, um, we did in our assignment, is we would, uh, let me change the view of this. We would graph the top one, graph the bottom one, and then we would see what happens for each kind of value of x going along of the top one divided by the bottom one. The numerator function, the function in the numerator divided by that function there. So uh, let's have a look what this looks like then. Um, if we had this, if we had this graph, so if I've got um, the numerator part, that's uh, x squared minus nine. So that's going to be like down here at minus nine, and it's going to go as a parabola. It's going to go something like this, right? And of course, it's symmetrical. And what's where's it going to cross? So minus three and three, right? And then, um, and then we've got this this other graph which is goes through at minus four, and it's going to cross where? Two and negative two. Okay. And then what you'd do is you would go along, and from this. Um, and you'll see these significant points going along. Uh, firstly, we should recognise, what, what should we recognise when we're dividing these two functions as, as what the graph of this graph divided by this graph should look like? What should be the first thing? Um, where the denominator is zero because it's an asymptote, that's perfect. Okay, so we'd want to look at our domain of it and see, and would recognise that if x was 2 or minus 2, this is a difference of 2 squares, so this part's x plus 2, x minus 2, um, we'd recognise that there is an asymptote at there and there, right? So we've got our two asymptotes. Um, so the function is not defined there. We can't find the gradient there as well. Um, what do we do? Um, what about these zeros? What about that zero there and that zero there? What is that going to mean? Hey. Uh, sorry, sir, yeah, for sure. What, what, are we, um, what, are the, what are these going to mean if the numerator is zero? Yeah, that's, they are going to be a zero, right? So this, that's going to be a zero and that's going to be a zero of our function. Um, what about on the left-hand side of this point? Is, is it positive or is it negative? There, is it there or is it here? Look at the two graphs. This one's this one is positive, and what's the other one at that point? And what's this graph when when x is like negative five over here? It's all they're, so they're both positive. So when you're doing a positive number divided by a positive number, uh, the the result is still positive. Okay, um, and also the x squared minus four graph is going to be like slightly bigger than the um, other one. But but these this is always going to stay positive, and then this one here. What about this? What about in this section here? Um, it's going to be a positive. Um, the, 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 it's going to be a negative number divided by a positive, so it's going to be negative here. So that's going to be negative. So we know it's up here somewhere. I'm not sure where. And then it's like it goes down. It's going to be some negative. I don't know if it keeps going down. I'm not sure. But when you've got negative nine or whatever this is, negative divided by zero, as, as you're approaching dividing by zero, you're getting closer and closer to dividing by zero, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger in that direction, yeah? Uh, what about here? Yeah, they're both, they're, it's going to be positive because it's a negative divided by a negative and this section here is also a negative divided by a negative. So that's also, so this is going to stay positive in this whole section. It's going to stay positive and the only point I know is going to be negative nine um, divide, um, negative, negative 9 
divided by negative 4, which is, what's that, 2 and 1 quarter, isn't it? So the only point I do know, this graph is going to go through, yes, you okay? At 2 and a quarter up. Now, I'm probably going to assume it's going to do this, but I'm not sure. I'm going to assume it's going to do that. Uh, and then the last one, I'm assuming it's going to be the same. Both positive over here um, and the positive and the negative. So I have a feeling that the graph's going to look something like this, but I'm not sure. Okay? I'm not sure. Does it? Um, let's, let's have a look at the... Let's have a look at the derivative and then we can see if we're going to find, say, a zero here, if this is going to be our only zero or what the derivative is doing. Okay, so let's, let's differentiate this and use the quotient rule now, okay? So I'll put that to the side and uh, we'll, work out, we'll work out the quotient rule, what we should do. So don't want that. Um, so... Uh, let's see what we're doing. So this one here, the top one, we're going to say that is u. Okay. And then we're going to say the bottom one is v. Um, it's important in this that v is the bottom one because, of course, this function is not just adding two things. Um, it was v to u minus u to v. And it's also over um, v squared. So that's going to be squared at the end. Okay, so when we're differentiating, it's important that we know which one's u and which one's v. Um, and then we're going to write down our four little things about u and v. So we're going to say u is x squared minus 9 and the derivative of it. And v is x squared minus 4 and the derivative of v. Okay, uh, that easy of course because that's 2x, isn't it? And uh, this one here, the this power is just going to go forward and be 2x as well. Okay, so our, our derivative of this function is pretty quick to get, but the derivative v du, why do I write du squared? v du minus u to v over v squared is, um, so this times by 2x. So I'm going to put the 2x first minus u dv, so 2x by x squared minus 9, all over x squared minus 4 squared. Okay, so let's see what we get. Uh, obviously, 2x is um, with both of them that I could factorise out. Um, now, what do I want to do with this top bit? So if I can do, I can pull out 2x from both of them, like it already is by both of them, because they're both the same. So I could, and I knew they were both going to be the same, they're both going to be a multiple of 2x. So what I could have written this top part is, is just wrote 2x by, um, x squared minus 4 minus, and then make sure I don't stuff up the double negative here. Um, so it's minus x squared and also the minus negative 9 as well. So it's going to be minus x squared plus 9. Because I can now cancel out these, right? And work that out. Um, and then that's over x squared minus 4 squared, which I can't do much with. But So it's now 2x by... Minus nine plus uh, minus four plus nine, so two x by five, so it's ten x, isn't it? In the numerator. Um, so this is our this is our gradient function. This is our derivative, and what we can see is that when x is zero, the numerator part, when when the numerator is zero, as long as that's it's uh, it's defined at that point. Um, that's, that's going to be our, our zero. So that is the only time the gradient is zero just there. So my graph looks right with this. Um, and then this one here, I guess if I wanted to look at the gradient function, it's, 
Um, it's got, this is x plus 2x minus 2 uh, squared, right? So this one, this new, that, that denominator there could be written as like x plus 2 squared, x minus 2 squared. It could be written like even like this. Um, so we know it's a double root at negative 2 and a double root at 2. So, in other words, when we're at 2, ah, look at this, uh, 2 and minus 2, that's actually funny because it's actually not defined at that point <laughs> anyway. The, the, gradient's, the, gradient's not, the gradient's not defined at this point, point actually. So it's not a double root at all. It's um, not defined there when the denominator is 0. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, now, the gradient, I'm not sure what this gradient's going to do, but if we wanted to try to see, um, you know, to try to see what the slope is doing, like my, my blue line here is saying that if I approach it getting close to negative two, like on the left-hand side, I'm gonna say that the gradient is really, really small. Um, so for example, I could, I could test my graph um, and see um, what the gradient is doing. But I said that the gradient is, um, sorry, I said the gradient, it's, it's, a, it's a large negative number. It's going down really, really steep. So this one here, if I sub like negative 2.1 into that, I would hopefully get a really large negative number. Let's check the calculator, what's it say? 10 um, times negative 2.1. Um, over uh, negative 2.1 squared. Um, let's see what my calculator says. Negative 2.1 squared minus 4, not sign, um, squared. Okay, so I got, I got when x is negative 2.1, y dash, the gradient is negative 120, approximately 125. Okay, so I got at negative 2.1, just here, this, the gradient is going down negative 125, so it's really, really steep, which, is, which makes sense. Um, and I've also said that this gradient, I'm, I, this is also a negative gradient here as well. Okay, so... So for this one here, I can see um, if, it, if it was like negative 1.9, if x was negative 1.9, I should also have a negative gradient as well. So if I, if I go in my calculator and replace where I put 2.1, uh, negative 2.1 with 1.9, uh, let's see what it does get, negative 1.9. Yeah, I, got, I also got a negative 124.917, right? So pretty much negative 125 as well. So these were doing that. Um, you might be asked, when is the graph increasing or when is the graph decreasing? And how are we going to use that? How are we going to work out when is, it, when is the graph increasing or, or decreasing? Because my one said, I said the graph is decreasing or there and it's decreasing here and then it's increasing, and then it's increasing, right? Like, so I have said that, and if we look at this derivative, we know that the denominator, because it's a squared just there, that means the denominator has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this one has to be positive or zero. And the only time at zero was at two and negative two where it was undefined. So I know that the denominator is zero. So what I would say is um, since um, or because the denominator um, x squared minus four squared is um, or I even say, I, I, right, instead of writing is, I would say is greater than or equal to zero for x is not, not negative or positive two, 
Okay, we know it's greater than or equal to zero because it's a square thing um, and we can't get zero in that, in that bracket because that, um, then, then, then y dash, the derivative, um, is increasing if 2x is greater than zero or y dash is decreasing, you might see y dash is less than zero, if 2x is less than zero, right? If, if, so if, if the numerator was positive, the graph is going up. If the numerator was negative, the graph is going down. In other words, if x is a negative number, we know anytime x is negative, the graph is going down, which is what my I have drew. And if x was a positive number, then the graph is going up. It's an increasing graph. So you can see that's why my gradient is always going down here or going down here because all those are negative values of x and then it's going up there and it's going up there. Okay, so we just look like, so that's, that kind of shows more. Now, I don't know, I've made up this graph. I'm not sure if it actually did exactly look like that, but at least it's all kind of playing out. Of course, if you actually did test the values, you could do a much better graph. Okay. Uh, I had one more, but I probably won't go into uh, graphing it too much. But I would hope that um, if I saw this and you were struggling, that x minus 3 is a graph that's, you know, like that goes through a minus 3. Um, and the square root of x minus 1 is our normal, um, you know, like top part of a kind of sideways parabola that's um, being shifted to the, what's that, left one. So, so this, that would be a graph like this, um, at negative one. And so now this, is, this graph is made by doing this divided by that. So we would know that the domain, the domain straight away for this graph is that X had to be um, an element of, or X had to be greater than or equal to it can't be, can't be negative one because we can't divide by zero. Okay, so X had to be greater than one. So you'd say one to infinite. Okay, with an open bracket, um, with the round one because it can't be one. It's not square. Um, so, oh yeah, minus one. Yeah. Okay, so, you, so you've got that. See, that's why you've got to be on the board. Um, and... We could also recognise that when this, the, when you've got a negative divided by a positive, it's the gradient has to be. Uh, so the graph is underneath here, not the gradient. The graph is down the bottom, uh, and when we, when they're both positive, the graph is going to be at the top. Now I don't know where they go in that, but that's just a quick kind of thing to see. Um, and let's have a look at the derivative. So we knew that with graphing and we've done our graphing topic, this is now looking at what the gradient is doing. So let's set that out. So the top part, I'm going to say, I'll do it in blue. Um, I'll do it in a different color because I just wrote other stuff. U is X minus three. U dash is one. We should all know that. Um, and now V. Um, put it in blue. So what's that? Root X plus one. What colour was I using? Green. So V is X plus 1 to the power of a half. Much easier to differentiate with that. And then the derivative of V will use our short form of the chain rule, yeah? Half going forward by the derivative of what's in the brackets. That's just 1. By, uh, and then this to the, the power being 1 less. Okay, so that's, so I'll change the form when I write it out, but that's the derivative. Um, of course, when this, when this is a negative power now, that's going to multiply by the two in that denominator there. So it's going to be two root x plus one. Okay, so let's have a look. So therefore, um, the derivative is v du minus u dv over v squared. Um, so I'll do, I'll do 
um, v times 1, so root x plus 1, minus uh, u times v, so x minus 3. Uh, if I, instead, um, instead of writing times x minus 3, times um, this, I know it's only 1 at the top, because this is 2 is in the bottom, and that's in the bottom as well. So I'm just going to go put it over to root x plus 1, okay? Because instead of writing times 1 over 2 root x plus 1, it's just no point mate, wasting the space. Okay, and then that's all over v squared, which is root x plus 1 squared, which is going to cancel out the, the, the roots. Okay? So, let's have a look, see what we can do with this. Of course, I want to write both of them with the same denominator. So I'm going to actually multiply this one here by root plus one over root plus one. We've got actually two root plus one over two root plus one. Okay, um, so what that's going to do is two times, and then the root plus one times root plus one, the, the, the roots are gonna cancel out. Um, and just get rid of these brackets, like get rid of that root part, right? So it's going to be 2 times this over 2 root plus 1, x plus 1. So that's what the numerator, that's what, that's what this expression at the front would be, because now they're the same. So you'll be left with, let's have a look and see. So 2x plus 2. So I've got left with 2x plus 2 minus x plus 3 over 2 root x plus 1 and then that uh, when I'm doing this over this, this squared and this root's cancelling out over x plus 1 remember if I've got this where does this go if I want to put it as one line Wait, does this get does the x plus one get times by the numerator there? What I'm going to have or the denominator? The numerator. Numerator. So this part. Yes. So I put the x plus one times here. No. No. So this one here, x plus one. Think about this. That's x plus one over over one, isn't it? So when I'm dividing by a fraction. Instead of dividing by a fraction, I multiply by this reciprocal. So, 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 here, oh, rainbow rule. <laughs> I've never seen you guys use the rainbow rule. I've never heard of um, proper. Okay, so that's, this is going to, the one is going to times up there with the rainbow rule and that, that's going to times by there. Rainbow rule, apparently. Okay, so, so, so let's do that in the next line. So, the 2x minus x is just x and plus 2 plus 3. So I've got x plus 5, that's times in by 1, it doesn't matter. And this, this 2 root x plus 1 is being multiplied by uh, x plus 1. Okay, so, so this is being multiplied by that. Um, notice... I guess if you wanted to take this a little bit further, um, what can you do with these two things here? Yeah, you're gonna add the powers, right? This is the power of a half and that's the power of one. So you could write as a power of three over two. Okay, um, whether you wanted to or not would be a different thing, but you could write it like that. Um, and I guess, yeah, um, just be very careful. Sometimes I guess, I know I'm talking a lot today, but it, this is just algebra stuff. Uh, please don't do, like I've seen, I've seen somebody do this um, last year. See how x plus five, you can say that's x plus one plus four. Don't think you can then go x plus one plus four, which is that, and then two x plus one to the power of three over two, and then cancel out this and this. Um, why can't you cancel it out? 
because there's a plus. Okay? Now, if you wanted to, you'd then say plus 4 over 2 x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2, and then you could cancel out this expression there, there this bit, and then still add the plus 4 over the same thing, but it's not going to be helpful. Okay? That's not going to be helpful. Um, so, e even, even writing it like this, um, in, in this form, is probably not that helpful, but you could, I guess, put a cubed there and then keep the square root. So you might, you might want to have like the square root of x plus one cubed. You could do it like that, or you could even put the cube on the outside of that brackets. Um, but you don't need to. This this form here, or even writing that x plus one earlier, could have been. Um, uh, better with those things. Um, notice, notice you could check these gradient things to then see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking there. I think it's um, to have a look. I can go through some simpler ones for you. Let's 